Welcome to Senior Day at AZF. I'd like to start introducing our seniors and their parents. And first up, we have Captain Anthony Paul and his dad, Mike, and his mom, Kerry. Next, we have our assistant captain, Adam Stagnone, his dad, Don, and his mom, Lisa. Next, we have Marissa Massaro with her dad, Franco, and her mom, Jen. Now we have Louis Goyette with his dad Greg and his mom Dawn. Andrew Petty with his dad Andy and his mom Erica. Thank you, seniors, and go boxes. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome into AZF Arena for the second half of a back-to-back -back, uh, Friday, Saturday for the Brockton Boxers as the Durfee Hilltoppers, the big three divisional rivals, come to town to face your boxers 
once again, as was the case yesterday, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and today I'm joined alongside my broadcast partner, Mr. Kevin Caro, of course, the athletic director of Brockton High School. Mr. Caro, it's senior day here at AZF, exactly five seniors on the Brockton roster. A very convincing win over the Norwell Mustangs, uh, Norwood Mustangs, excuse me, yesterday. What does Brockton have to do to convert that into success today against the big three divisional opponent in the Hilltoppers? I think they just have to need to come out early, um, strike early, um, and just keep up the game plan that worked so well yesterday. They were aggressive, they they were physical, and their hard work paid off with the you know goal with 35 seconds left. So I'm hoping they keep the momentum up today. And there's no reason they shouldn't. Senior day, they have a night there. All their parents are here. Would be a good way for our seniors to go out. Well, it's quite the mismatch in roster size. We were comparing it shortly before the teams lined up at center ice. Durfee brings all of nine skaters dressing for today's matchup. Brockton, on the other hand, with 17. The first matchup between these two teams, a 6 to nothing win for the boxers and that's something that i just hope that doesn't become a detriment is coming in overconfident thinking that the derby is going to you know lie down and just not show up but um you know that's why i say they got to push the action on early take a lead and and just keep the pedal to the metal well my favorite thing about the big three division is that all three schools have the exact same color scheme Durfee wearing their away all black jerseys with red and white trim. The boxers, on the other hand, white jerseys, red and white stripes, and a big boxer head on the stomach. Yeah, like Northeastern playing BU. That's really all it yeah, is. Absolutely. That's why I like BC. It's the deep maroon and gold. Oh, we got we got the music going over there on the side in between plays. I I like that touch that they bring here. I don't know it's who does it, but they do a really nice job filling that downtime in between face-offs and delays in the action. And there could be a lot of that today. The score of these two teams' last matchup here at AZ Arena, of course, last season, 19 to one in favor of the Boxers. Here's hoping for a slightly more competitive game than that this afternoon. You're not embellishing on that 19 to one, Matthew. Not embellishing, not at all. Brockton controlling the offensive zone time. Crookshank launching one from the blue line and that went wide. Peter Sylvia intercepting the pass in the neutral zone, putting it right back into the Durfee zone. Oh. Now Massaro goes down. She That's attempted to put a hit on it. She, she was getting the somebody the business. There. She's shaking the cobwebs out on the bench. Brendan Palme Palermo, rather, across the Durfee line. Brockton changing out. Louis Goyette, one of the five seniors on this team. Pete and Sylvia. Sylvia launching a wrist shot from almost the penalty bench, and that one went wide. 12.45 left in the first period. Sylvia keeping this one in. He took the hit, but the player that hit him, number four of the Hilltoppers, Jared Botello, the junior forward, ended up going down pretty hard. Now Peyton Sylvia. Stopping behind Adam Stagnone. Indirect self pass off the boards and he gets it up to number 18 and that is Ben Martin, his first game back in quite a while. As he took that big hit here at AZF before the boxers road trip and missed a few weeks with what one would assume is a concussion. Sylvia we'll off of Anthony Paul's skates. Box is not looking as sharp as uh, yesterday. I think they're just coming out a little sluggish. They might have forgotten to sharpen their skates. <laughs> Forgot to remember that it is a sheet of ice out there. It is. 
very athletic play by the referee to <laughs> jump over three sticks in the puck. Sylvia shot, pad save on the rebound attempt. It squirts 200 feet down the ice. Icing is waved off. This is the fourth and final matchup for the boxers in the big three division. 2-0 against New Bedford. Of course, winning the first matchup of the year against these same Hilltoppers. Brockton already clinching the playoff berth in the MIAA South Sectional Tournament. Yeah, and I think those pairings will come out sometime next week, later on in the week. See where we you travel to next. I'm guessing you'll be somewhere down the Cape. That sounds about right. Last, I think, last four or five years, the boxers' first round matchup has been down at the beautiful Gallo Ice Arena in Bourne. Right over the bridge. Yeah, that's a pretty nice place through down the there. They have a full service concession stand. I'll tell you the place I was at the other day was the Canton Ice House where um, Canton High School plays the Varians out of there. And I mean, that place is spectacular. This one all the way down, icing against the Hilltoppers, 10.36 to go in Not the first. Not taking anything away from our fine establishment here at the AZF. But uh, no, it's just that Gallo Arena, they, they, they do it upright down there. Rodman's very nice on uh, Route yep. 1. Rodman's on good. Walpole, I think. I like the bog down in Kingston. That's a good place. My niece plays down there for her AAU team. Rockland's pretty nice, too. Yeah, Rockland is, um, that was my home rink growing up in Abington. And they've made some nice upgrades over there, and I know the Cashman family still runs it. Wasaro touching the puck offside, so whistle stoppage, neutral zone faceoff. We'll be at the Rockland Ice Arena for, I think, April 15th. The Bruins alumni come to town to face the Hug Foundation, led by Alex Bizantin. Ray Bork will be in the house, so okay. come on down. And then 15 days later, we're right here at AZF on a Sunday afternoon. April 15th would be? Saturday. Saturday, the day before Easter then? Yep. Okay. 15 days later on April 30th, the traditional last game of the season for the Bruins alumni right here at Easy Aff Arena for, uh, against Peter Crone's Black and Blues, a ragtag team of oh. public safety officials, retired police officers. My favorite one of those matchups was uh, five days after the Boston Marathon bombing, and they had... Uh, ice agents and uh, FBI officials that all playing in the game and oh, wow. these guys were going off no sleep all week yeah and they came out here and they played a solid 60 minutes of hockey and had fun doing it but everybody looked completely gassed <laughs> after <laughs> now will Knuckles Nyland and uh, Terry O'Reilly be joining that bunch with O'Reilly. Uh, O'Reilly's typically there. Rick Middleton. I think Nifty. Yep, Nifty's a there. Shot. And that one goes in. Is that a goal? That's a goal for the boxers. I believe that's Peter's, uh, rather Zach Sylvia. Not a whole lot of jubilation. Not at all. <laughs> you got to get pumped, guys. 9-16 I mean, in the first. 9-16. It's like they do that every two minutes, it seems like. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, another goal. Oh, well. Zach Sylvia... Putting it off the pads of Cody Botello, the goaltender for the Hilltoppers, getting his own rebound and putting it top shelf. Rex Sylvia unassisted with 9.16 to go in the first. One thing's encouraging as I'm looking out into the parking lot, it's still daylight out. And it is 4.30 and it's still light out. And Actually feels sort of like spring. It was pretty warm today, about 50, uh, 50 degrees. Not bad. It's definitely warm enough to hit golf balls at the range, if it were open. Of course, not bad, relatively speaking. My mother and sister are going to Florida next week, so that's what Mad yeah, Dog you don't want to. You don't want to give this up in high school hockey in the ACF. No, no, rink. no, no place I'd rather be. Good to see the air conditioner still works in this place. <laughs> Peter Sylvia, Peter Sylvia launching a shot from the hash marks. Glove saved by Botello. He holds on for the faceoff. This is the third of five matchups this weekend. Six if you count the holiday on Monday. 
Yes, they play Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Friday. And then tournament time the following week. Keep an eye on our Twitter feed, at the Brockton channel, for first round matchups for all teams. Brockton hockey, boys and girls basketball, of course. Highly looking forward to the girls game tomorrow against Carver as Jelani Jackson stands at 991 points on her high school career. Mm -hmm. I just hope we have a good crowd. And if you're listening out there or watching, if you can set aside a couple hours tomorrow afternoon to be part of history. I don't think we've had anybody score 1,000 points since 2009. 2009. Taryn Johnson. So this is a real special moment. Jelani's a great kid, and I just really like to have as many bodies in the stands as we can. Very humble about it, too. I ran into her in the parking lot after the boys' matchup last night, and I said, Jelani, how many points did you get tonight? You know, how, how far are you away? I'm not keep. I'm not keeping count. Yeah. I don't know. You gotta ask. You gotta ask the uh, the scorekeeper. She's the last one coming off the bus. <laughs> it's a very good 59 to 53 win against yeah. the Marshfield Rams mm -hmm. for the girls last you know, night. The girls have been playing well as of late. I mean, they really have. I don't know what kind of got into them. They turning it on at the right time. They, they struggle a little bit midway through the year, and Coach Dingwell's done a real nice job just kind of uniting the team and having them play together, and uh, I think they could make a little bit of a run. Last time the boxers made a little bit of a run, we went to Wellesley High, a very nice, completely new building there, only a few years old at that point. This one off the post and into the protective netting. And the boxers ended up having a home game after the away game where they fell. I th actually, I think they made it all the way to Marshfield High. Okay. And they lost to the Rams. So that was, actually, that was the year that both the boys and girls lost to the Rams. Really? Back-to-back -back nights. Well, we'll be hosting again. I have an actual meeting with um, the tournament director for the MIAA later after this game, just to go over the details about when we're gonna host and how many games, so it's that time of year, March Madness. Of course, we also include Cardinal Spellman and Southeastern Regional in our postseason coverage on Brockton Community Access Sports. Crookshank launching oh. one blocker saved by Botello. The Southeastern Regional slash West Bridgewater hockey team Undefeated oh, at this juncture is Crookshank launching one. Actually, I think it was Sylvia again launching one as he was skating across the slot, and that one finds the top left corner. Brockton is up 2 to nothing, 6.18 to go in the first. And Zach Sylvia with his second of the day. They look like they just lost their best friend coming off of from scoring a goal. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. I think it's more of the stopping of the clock that's the issue for the boxers. So it is Zach Sylvia, his second of the day, assisted. Oh, see, that's that. Anthony Poe and Al Birmingham on the assists on that one. Durfee getting its first shot of the day. I have to find out who does the music in between the plays because it's, it's right up my alley. I mean, Motley Crue and Metallica. From Van Halen. I don't want to ruin I, I, it for I'm, you. I'm dating myself, I know. There's only like six songs on that playlist. It's okay, so they're, they're all good. They're all good. Nathan El Shami. I still don't. Uh, the boys basketball team still is trying to figure out what the heck I put on the, the warm up CD that I made with Casey and the Sunshine Band and Prince and. <laughs> Cool in the gang, Earth, Wind, and Fire, like Mr. Carroll. What is this? Classic. It's classic music. Some Zeppelin on there. Uh, I, did, I didn't. I didn't put any. Didn't put any classic rock on. We met mostly with some um, some dance stuff, some funky '80s. <clears throat> Of 
Peyton Sylvia keeping it in at the blue line. Peter Sylvia hit from behind. The arms stay down. Massaro yeah, I fighting think those, for it. Uh, those arms are going to stay down, I think, pretty much all day. Yeah, there's going to be some blatant. <laughs> the last time, uh, so the last <coughs> season when New Bedford was here, it was the same case. And oh, tempers it, flared as it just went up. the case. And, uh, icing against the Hilltoppers, their third of the game. But as we've seen in previous years in the big three divisional matchups here at AZF, tempers can flare. One of New Bedford's players decided to launch himself into the head of one of the boxers. He was ejected, and someone had to serve out his four-minute yeah. major and that, penalty. And that's not, I mean, and I've learned that if you get ejected out of a game, I mean, it's a big deal. It's not only that you get ejected for that game. Suspended for the next one. You get suspended for the next two, and if it's really flagrant in which you, the referee determines that you're trying to intentionally injure someone, um, that kid could lose their eligibility for a whole year. From all sports, just not the one they're currently in. Not many things that I agree with with the MIAA, but that is one of them. Yeah, I mean, you have to keep everybody safe. That has to be the number one priority is, is the, the safety of the athletes at all times. Especially in the contact sports hockey football soccer i didn't realize soccer, i really yep. i did not realize how physical soccer was until i was on the sidelines i mean it's brutal and wrestling is another one yep a few years ago we had a pitcher for the boxer baseball team throwing at someone else's head and he lost his eligibility yeah Stagnone stopping this one with the stick. Three and a half to go in the first period. Oh. A turnover, a shot, and this one zinging high over the crossbar. Jalen Bridges off the boards for Frank Atten. Atten backhanding it into the slot. Nobody on the receiving end for Brockton. Durfee back into the neutral zone. The Durfee player heard footsteps of Jalen Bridges, who was getting ready to launch a hip check. Old school. Anthony Paul making a nice move, creating some space, sending it out to the high slot for Crookshank, his shot. Oh. And that one zings wide, the rebound off the boards. Goes to number oh. four. <laughs> yeah, I'm going up. Went down uh, a little bit too easily. Jared Botello, who is still on the ice. No embellishment call on that? Yellow off the boards. Looking for himself, Anthony Paul with a slap shot. That slap shot. This one banging off the glass and all the way down the ice. Zach Sylvia and his two goals stopping behind Adam Stagnone. Should be noted, Anthony Paul, pretty good golfer in his own right. Member of the boxer golf team. Big day for Brockton. High athletics. Yeah, we've the, had a really. We have a state champion in the house. We do. We sure do. Well, we're going to have a penalty. Oh, and up goes the arm. We, we called it. The tempers can flare, and. Yeah. Especially in a mismatch such as. You this. keep talking about a mismatch. It's only two zip with a minute 53 left. It's not like. It's more than nothing. It's the more than nothing. It's game with New Bedford. There's an it eight was, skater difference between these two doesn't teams. doesn't matter. It's only still two zip. Crookshank is in the box for a high stick. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Minute 30 second power play for the Hilltoppers. Brockton immediately clearing it out off the face off. Elbowing. Elbowing. No, elbowing, not a high stick. Could have gone either way. Right in front of the Durfee bench. Block shot for Peyton Sylvia. This one off the stick of Adam Stagnone. Sylvia hard off of the glass. And Anthony Paul now in with speed to the Durfee zone. Short-handed his shot oh. off the glove of Botello. Yeah, but you do. You have, we had um, three Brockton High boxers win state titles today. We had Cole Wyman win... Uh, state title in wrestling. 
in his weight class, Sarah Remy, who's in the house and is going to join you on the broadcast in a little while. High jump champ. And uh, Rudy Otto Ramos, state champ in the 300-meter dash. So we have three state champs, which is not an easy task by any stretch of the imagination. The net is off its moorings. No whistles blow. Anthony Paul now all the way down the ice. Stick saved by Botello. And he lets it go for David Piella. You mentioned Cole Wyman and the Brockton High wrestling team. Let's talk about the success that they've had, a complete turnaround oh, under man. Deshaun Fentress. Deshaun and Mark Mendez and all the other volunteers that they have to come in to help those kids. I mean, it's it's a family, and I think that's that's the mentality that the kids go in, that they pick each other up and they, they work together, they win together, they lose together. And, uh, no, they're just a really good group. Buzzer sounds in the first period has come to an end. The score is two to nothing in favor of the Brockton Boxers. Both sco goals scored by Zach Sylvia, one unassisted, one assisted by Frank Atten and Anthony Paul. That's where we stand. Mr. Carroll, what do the Boxers have to do to put the foot on the gas? And I know they're up by two, but yeah, they're only up by two. Two insurance goals never and, hurt. Uh, yeah, I, I just think they're going to have to force the issue. It seems like they're a little sluggish, and I don't know if that's from playing back-to-back -back days. I think it's the first time they've done it all all year, or they came in a little overconfident. And I think Coach Cunningham will get them ready to go, and I think we'll see. Hopefully, we'll see that up-tempo game that they brought at Norwood yesterday in the second period. Well, 2 nothing. Zach Sylvia with both goals. Brock in over the Derby Hilltoppers. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you second period action right after this. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. More will talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused. Fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it. So make it. Louise. Louise. Can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Hey, Coach Chris Cunningham, up 2 nothing after one. Two goals scored by Zach Sylvia. Talk about the successes and what you're trying to work on in the second. Uh, well, you know, just put the puck on net and uh, use our speed. I think we're uh, trying to get a little too fancy, a little too cute. So we just got to use our speed and execute. A great game yesterday against Norwood. What are you taking from that into today's game and against Natick on Monday? Uh, well, doing the, uh, the simple things is what made us successful. So uh, we got to continue doing that. It's all about hard work um, and executing and uh, not, being, uh, not making the extra moves. Five seniors on this team. What have they contributed and uh, what are you looking forward to from them for the rest of the year? Uh, well, it's, uh, this is the time where they, uh, they need to lead. You know, it's uh, playoff time where uh, you need the extra effort and, uh, you know, overcoming adversity. So they need to use their experience and kind of lead the way for the younger guys. Coach, good luck in the second. Thank you. Hey, Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey, guys, what are you doing? We're going sledding. We're going biking. Yeah. I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. It was great. Okay, honey, I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into AZF Arena for second period action between the Durfee Hilltoppers and their big three divisional rivals, the Brockton Boxers. Brockton coming into the second period with a two to nothing lead, both goals scored by Zach Sylvia. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, 
Joined alongside my broadcast partner, the athletic director of Brockton High, Mr. Kevin Caro, and a special guest, Sarah Remy, who is the newest state champion in uh, the high jump. Tell us about what happened this morning. Um, this morning, I just went out there, and Coach Russell said, just go out there and do what you're supposed to do, and so that's what I did. So, from what I hear, you hit 5-2, and then you went up to 5-6, you missed 5-6, then there was a, a jump off of sorts. Oh, yes. So what happened was, was after 5-2, we both, uh, me and this girl from Newton North, had both, had no, we all got, got both of our jumps on our first attempt. So from there, we were tied for first place. And after we both missed 5-4, we went back down. We had a fourth attempt at 5-4. We missed that. So we went back down to 5-3. And... We both missed that too, so we went to back down to five two, and I fortunately jumped that height. And I got a, were you close at five three? Um, I honestly don't know. You don't I, know. I I think I was. We'll say that I've jumped five three before, but. So what brings you to AZ Afrina? Are you just trying to cool down after the <laughs> the heat of the morning? No, actually, my boyfriend's the goalie, so we're out here supporting him for senior night. But but yeah. I love hockey, so it's a fun night I to gotta ask, how does it feel to be a state champ, like the best in the high jump in the whole state of Massachusetts? It's is it sunk in yet? Um, it's sunk in more, more now than it did earlier after I won, but it feels pretty awesome, I'm not going right. to lie. And what are your plans for next year? Um, as of right now, I haven't made any official decisions yet. I'll probably be out at Westfield State and jumping for them, but uh, like I said, everything's still up here at this point in time. And spring track, we're going to focus on the high jump? Oh, yes, of, of course. course. Maybe we'll get some hurdles out there too, but we're not sure about that yet. So you're one of three state champions from this morning. Uh, Cole Wyman winning in wrestling and uh, Brockton winning in the, the 300 meters as well. What, what does it feel like to be part of what's turned into a very successful athletic program led by Mr. Kevin Cairo himself? It's awesome. I mean, I love being out there and I love hearing about how other people are doing well. Cole and I actually were in history together last year, so I kind of know him very well. And so, yeah, it's great to hear that they're also ex excelling as well. Adam Stagnone, your boyfriend, has had a very successful season in net. Uh, talk about what his mentality is off the ice and, and why he's so successful. He's been a rock all year for the Brockton Boxers. Honestly, he just loves being out there. So whenever he gets a chance to be out there, he's going to give it his all. And that's what, that's what I really love about him is that fact that he'll just go out there and just give it his all every game. Right. I gotta ask, where did you go to middle school? I went to West. All right. Ah. Is, is West isn't best, is it? No. Oh, it is. No. <laughs> east, East, all day. Back when you went there and I taught there, yes, but there, there's <laughs> something about being a South Dragon that is pretty special. A West Wolverine. Special. Were you a Wolverine? Is that what it was? Yes, Back that was a Wolverine. Mr. Murray. Yep. All right. And I know that she was all embarrassed, but she's been fantastic. I just want to congratulate you, you. on a great season you and so all your much. hard work paid off. Oh, and yeah. we are so proud Thank you. of your accomplishments and representing Boxer Nation. Yeah. And um, keep it up in the spring. Thank you. Yeah. Can't go, get one, got one more meet next weekend, and then we'll get out there again in the spring, hopefully. So we have all states next all weekend? All states next weekend. I competed there last year. Didn't place, but so we're going to go out there this weekend and change all right, that. So what's the focus going to be on this week in practice? It's going to be. We're going to do anything different. Uh, we got we got to work on some technique stuff a little bit. I was trying to get that out there this morning, but it wasn't working as well as I would have liked it to. But so we're going to really focus on that this week, such as just little technicality stuff, just throwing my head back when I jump, getting my feet out. But other than that, that's really we're not going to change too much. We're going to probably lift a couple days, get me a little bit stronger beforehand. But that's going to be about it. Once again, you're listening to Sarah Remy, the newest state champion in women's hur uh, high jump. I was about to say hurdles. Oh, no. We gave that up freshman year. <laughs> <laughs> well, back to hockey. Cam Bronco is in the box for an elbow for the Durfee Hilltoppers. Brockton's first power play opportunity of the evening. Uh, Sarah, we want to thank you. Wish you luck for next, uh, next weekend. And congratulations on winning the state title, bringing it back to Brockton. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. All right, that wasn't so bad, was it? Nah. Piece of cake. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. 11.36 left in the second period. Brockton up two to nothing over the Durfee Hilltoppers. Zach Sylvia to Jalen Bridges. 102 left on the power play. 
Murphy clearing it all the way down and Stagnone coming all the way out of his net, sending it high off the boards. And what a great kid. Really nice young lady. And that's, uh, honestly, that is the best part of this job is being the AD that you get to work with these kids who genuinely want to be out here representing the school. You don't have to worry about them getting in trouble or making poor choices. They just go out and about their business and they represent everything that's good about the city of Brockton. 27 seconds left on the power play for the boxers. It's one of the things I've noticed more about you than some previous athletic directors. I was at Brockton High for a couple of things. National History Day, National Signing Day. Brockton scoring, I believe this is Marissa Massaro from the face-off dot. It was number 20, whoever number 20 is. Jalen Bridges. Yep. I think that's your goal scorer. We'll find out. Brockton and on it, the power play. It, there was and Mike shaking his left. head saying yes. Yes. Number 20. Number 20, Jalen Bridges. Counted in one for the sophomore. But one thing I've noticed more so about you than other athletic directors in the past is you have a very special relationship with the kids. And it's not just the athletes. It's anyone yeah. you recognize. It's, hi, how are you doing? How, how are your classes going? And kids are really responding to that in a very positive way up well, at well that's good to hear and that's just how i've always done things and um you know, the kids are real important they, they're what make the school run and uh i would just like to get to know them as athletes as students as people and just to show that there's another side of me too that it's just not i would, wasn't always just the principal or i'm not just the athletic director i'm i'm just a regular regular guy Back in my day, you were just a history teacher. I was a social studies teacher. Social, oh, yes, yeah, social <laughs> studies. <laughs> Jalen Bridges officially credited with the goal. Now, if we go back a really long ways, I was the full-time building substitute at East before I started teaching there. That was before me. Yeah. That was my first, my first real job in Brockton was the building sub which I honestly think was the best experience I had. I get to work in all the different classes, uh, work with all different grades and levels, and, and I loved it. Of course, back in my day, <laughs> the now Dr. Cliff Murray was a science teacher over I know, he was. Now he's like number four in the school department. Oh, but if you five. see how many administrators that we have in the city came from East, under uh, Donnie Burrow's tutelage, I mean, we have Dr. Murray, we have Darlene Campbell. There's uh, Dennis Ganich, who's there, Kelly Silva, myself, Barbara Lovell, Troy Keltica, all, all these folks. Diane Davis, who's up at the high school now, is the department head for special ed. I mean, there are so many people that came from that school. And at the time, you didn't realize how good it was until you got, <laughs> <laughs> really. Is a teacher. What I remember from yeast is broken air conditioning, leaky roofs. Broken air conditioning. We didn't have air conditioning. Your See, window, we your window must have been. Your, your window must have been broken. It didn't open. That's about the only air conditioning we had. Arms go up for a third time today. Brockton's going to be called for. Oh, off to the sin penalty. bin. What do we got? Anthony Paul headed towards the box. Discussion with an official. Uh, is that boarding? The ref stuck his one arm out with a fist, which boarding typically is a fist into the other hand. Interference is the X, but no official, at least recognizable roughing signal. Could be. Waiting for the official word. Either way, Anthony Paul in the box for a minute and 30 seconds for a penalty to be named later. And it's going to be roughing. Anthony Paul for roughing. 30 seconds of that penalty already gone. 8 12 left in the second period. Brockton up 3 to nothing. Two goals by Zach Sylvia and one by Jalen Bridges. The Bridges goal was assisted by Anthony Paul and Marissa Massaro.
two assists on that last Brockton goal. Both seniors being celebrated oh. here today. Durfee with an opportunity, number 13, Matt Saunders, the junior forward. And he had, he had the whole right side of the net open. Taken away by Zach Sylvia, dumping it in from the red line. 15 seconds left on the penalty to Paul, number 17, bring it out, Devin Ferreira. And Brockton clearing it out one last time. Penalty is up, Paul out of the box, back at even strength. Well, that was a quick minute and a half. 7.05 to go now in the second period. Oh. Crookshank looking for Nathan El Shami, doesn't connect, and Brendan Palermo forced to chase it all the way down into the Brockton zone. Peter Sylvia with it now. Back to Palermo now. El Shami trying to poke it to himself. Instead, Peter oh, Sylvia loses over the edge. red line. Sylvia with a shot, excellent glove save, oh. it's loose. Botella couldn't uh -oh, hang on uh -oh. to it, uh -oh. and what we're we gonna see a penalty. Peter Sylvia for interference, who's bear hugging number 15. I don't know number if I 13, saw it quite Matt that Saunders. way. <laughs> I saw the arms for both players were tangled yeah, up. It if anything, like, it's either incidental were, or it's I thought they were both going matching. for the puck, and I didn't see anything that was flagrant. And, or, they have a much better view. Botello has been very strong in net today. All things considered for the Durfee Hilltoppers. Holding. Holding, that's not the sign the official gave. <laughs> On it goes, holding the official call against Peter Sylvia, Brockton clearing it all the way down the ice. And it's five o'clock and it's still light outside. It's a beautiful thing. It is, it's a wonderful thing. Oh, and that should be, somebody should be going out. That's a trip. Derby touching it up, Atten with some snow on his pants. And number seven, Cam Bronco, is headed to the box. This is definitely not the same Brockton team that we saw yesterday. <laughs> That's for sure. I think <laughs> the downfall could be that they're playing down to their opponent. Which yeah, we've it, seen it that be a very it's, dangerous it's, thing. It could be, the, I mean, I think that you have a couple factors. I think what you just said, Matt, in which they're playing down to the level, but the back-to-back -back days, a uh, little emotional letdown after a big win yesterday. You get a big and, game on Monday, and, Natick. And maybe a little overconfident, too. Natick, a very good program in the state. Oh. That could have been. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that hurt old, me. Old forearm <laughs> shiver to the face. No harm, no foul, no penalty. 16 seconds left on the four on four and then Brockton will go up for about 30 seconds. Four forty-five left in the second period. Brockton hanging on by the skin of their teeth to that three to nothing lead. Frank Atten looking to add to that total. He's given the business by the number 11, Owen Norton. Yeah. Oh, oh. A Norton business, comes away yeah. with it, turns it over to Anthony Paul. Paul to Peyton Sylvia. His shot zings wide. Now Jalen Bridges trying to put one home, makes a fancy move, and we were talking with Chris Cunningham. Oh, he's going to get lined up here. I guarantee it. That, that, oh, that, yeah, there's the jar in there between number 11 and our number 17. Out to the blue just, line. Just for keep an Sylvia. eye on that. 
That'll be to Paul. His <laughs> shot off of Peters, uh, Frank Atten rather in front. <laughs> Bridger's coming away with it. Peyton Sylvia oh. out in front. Can't get a shot off. Nope. nope. Atten trying to do the same thing. Brockton unsuccessful on their 32nd power play. Peyton Sylvia with it forward to the goal line. His wraparound attempt off of the pads of Botello, and he's able to cover up for the faceoff. The rivalry is starting to show a little bit. Yeah, it's getting mentioned. a little chippy out there. You just have to make, be careful that you know, the temper doesn't get the better of anybody and somebody's thrown out of the game. Brockton with an off day tomorrow after this back-to-back. -back, they go up against the Natick Red Hawks on President's Day. Nathan Oshimi with a shot. Botello covering up. A I think that was a little quick whistle, but. A little bit of pushing and shoving. Marissa Massaro was right out in front trying to poke it loose. 3.38 to go in the second. Massaro winning the faceoff to Crookshank. His shot zinging high off the glass. Peter Sylvia to Massaro. Massaro oh, into the that's slot. A nice, that's a great a pass. Backhand to shot off the oh, pads and great pass. Deflected out and Durfee able to clear the zone. 320 oh, left to go in the second. Check. Oh. Oh, she's hurt. Massaro oh, coming she, to the she, bench she, very she, gingerly. Yeah, she she took a she took a she took a hit hard into the boards over there. Under three minutes to go now in the second, that, three to nothing. That's twice that's happened in two games that somebody's really kind of drilled her and so much for the unwritten rule about not laying out one of the girls. Maybe it makes them feel better. I mean, you got nine skaters, you down three goals, so a big three divisional, we'll, we'll call it a rivalry. It's the easy target. She's about seven inches shorter than any yeah. other member, uh, any other skater on the ice. She is not being worked on by Jerry Connor, so. That's a good sign. I think she might have had the wind knocked out of her. Again, this is the third game of our wacky weekend of <laughs> sports here at Brockton High. Wonderful weekend of sports, not wacky, wonderful. What wacky, wonderful weekend of boxer athletics. Of course, we witnessed the Brockton Boxers' huge win against the Mustangs of Norwood. Not such a great game last night for the boys basketball team. Who no. Got drilled by 20 points to Catholic Memorial, which is to be expected by the Catholic Conference these days. Yeah, but... Uh, Brockton was in the game. I mean, I honestly think that uh, there was a point where they could have made a run, but they just couldn't make any shots. And I saw air balls and just bad passes and turnovers, and they've got to clean that up before tournament time, or it's going to be it, it'll be a very quick in and out of the tournament. My concern was. To start the game, they were 0 for 8 from beyond the arc, and they kept hawking them up. Yeah, and that's that's been the story of their year. And they, if they make their first couple, they they're a completely different team. If they miss their first couple, it you can almost see the panic in their eyes, like here we go again. So I'm hoping tonight against Marshfield, they'll rebound and just be a little more patient and work the inside. They have somebody that's six foot nine in the paint. Hoping you would go to them. This game, the Durfee Hilltoppers against the Brockton Boxers. A minute left in the second period. Right after this, we're headed over to Staff Gymnasium for the boys' basketball team against the Marshfield Rams. And tomorrow, the girls' basketball team back in action against Carver. Shot deflected off the inside of the post. Zach Sylvia able to glove down the clearing attempt. Some pushing and shoving between 
Atten and the captain, David Piella. Shot off the wrist of Botello out in front off the skate of Bridges. Atten comes away with it. Atten gets laid out. 10 seconds left, rocked into trying to get off a final shot. What do we have? Whistle, we're gonna have. What do we have? Penalty? Another one? The Brockton fans shouting that it should be offsetting. Frank Atten headed to the box yeah. for an interference. I'm gonna ask, is number 11 out on the ice for them? Sure. Because those two have been going at it and I think that's the same too. 6.4 seconds to go. Durfee on a 1 minute 30 second penalty. Frank Atten in the box for roughing. High sticking they're going to call it. The refs are all over the place with the calls. The buzzer sounds. Brockton is up 3 to nothing at the end of the second period. The, the technique and the, the clear cutness of everything from yesterday has really gone down in this game. They're, they're yeah. winning by three goals, but it should be a lot more than that. Yeah, I mean, they're just not, I don't think there's any sense of urgency like there was yesterday. Um, like I think, like we said earlier, it could be a little bit of an emotional letdown. They could be tired. Uh, maybe they're playing down to this level, but um, hopefully they'll get it together in the third period. I mean, it, it hasn't been horrible, but I was expecting a, a lot cleaner and crisper game from them after yesterday. 3-0 at the end of the second period. Zach Silvio with two goals. Jalen Bridges with the other marker for the Brockton Boxers. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you third period action right after this. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Class, today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused. Fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise. Louise. Can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key? is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Coach, you added another one in the second. You're coming to the third. Three to nothing. What's the strategy going in? Uh, keep working hard. Keep getting pucks in the net. Pucks in deep. Take care of uh, the puck in our zone. And uh, you know, finish out strong in the last 15. Got a big game on Monday. Are you going to try to get some insurance goals and then rest up a bit, or are you going to keep the foot on the gas? Uh, keep the foot on the gas and just uh, worry about one day at a time, and uh, we'll worry about Monday on Monday. Sylvia with two goals. Are you trying to feed him the puck, get him the, the hat trick here on senior day? Uh, we're, just, we're just trying to play, not really feed anyone. Just uh, keep playing as a team. Coach, good luck in the third. Thank you. Hey, Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey, guys, what are you doing? We're I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. It was great. Okay, honey. I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in, because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Well, ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into AZ AF Arena for third period action between the Durfee Hilltoppers and your Brockton Boxers. Brockton coming in with a three to nothing lead over their big three divisional rivals. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Join alongside my broadcast partner, Kevin Cairo. A big weekend in boxer sports. We heard from Sarah Remy, the newest state champion in the women's high jump at the state tournament. She competes next week in the all State. Yeah, States. next Sunday they go back to the Reggie. Back to the Reg. That's not too far. No. Reggie Lewis Center, right up in uh, in Boston. Brockton up three to nothing again. Two goals scored by Zach Sylvia, one by Jalen Bridges. 
here on senior day for the boxers. The five seniors, absolutely worth noting. Andrew Petty, Anthony Paul, Marissa Massaro, Louis Goyette, and Zach Sylvia. So Brockton has some work to do going into next year with a lot of big names to replace. I think we're encouraged that uh, we have 13 um, kids in the middle school that are coming up from eighth grade. So we're hoping that we have a little bit of a feeder program and that we don't lose. We've got a little bit of crackle. Anthony Paul chipping it to Justin Crookshank. Kirkshank DDD to Sylvia. Hockey in Brockton. Oh, and there's Melissa Marissa giving somebody the business on the on the boards. Good for her. But every almost every other sport has some sort of feeder program. Well, one of the things that we're looking to do, honestly, is to have a um, middle school travel team. Now, I'd like to organize, see if we can run it through community schools in which we pick the best, you know, three or four players from each middle school, put them together, give them a coach, just so they play together before they get up to the high school. And a lot of times I think that has been the issue where they've been coached by so many different people and have so many different teammates that when they come to the high school, it's, it's kind of tough. And if you take a look at some of the successful programs in the other communities, that's what they do. And it's not done through AAU pr um, primarily. It's, it's through a, a youth travel program. Well, you've got for soccer, which is like the fastest growing thing mm -hmm. in Brockton, you've got the BYSA, Brockton Youth Soccer Association. Football, you've got the, uh, the junior boxers. Mm -hmm. Baseball, you've got you know 27 well. different little leagues in the city. But hockey, there's really not much to go no, around. Hockey, basketball, um, baseball. Like basketball, that, that's, you've got AAU, but that's, that's, it's, yeah, it's but expensive. That's, it's expensive, and that's why if we could do something in which we had the kids play up at Brockton High School, practice at Brockton High when the, when it was time. Just to get them excited about coming up there, because I mean that facility is—it's—it's it's a great facility. Um, maybe we wouldn't lose so many kids to private schools if we exposed them to what we have early enough. I th honestly, I think that's what one of the problems is. You go—you got Severian and BC High coming in here and saying, "Well, come look at our facilities before these kids mm -hmm. can even see what Brockton has to offer." Now, one of the things that I'm really excited about is our new weight room that we're, we've just started working on today. Uh, we're, we're going to give the, the athletes a 21st century um, state-of-the-art facility right here at the high school underneath the gym. We, we've been lucky enough to partner up with one of our strength coaches from Harvard that's going to come in and put, a, put together sports-specific programs for both boy, boys and girls teams. So I'm curious to see if we get everybody in that weight room in the off season if that's going to translate to better success on the field and I honestly think it will I mean I just honestly think that we're la we were lacking but within the next couple of weeks we will have a facility just as good as CM or Zavarian or BC High right here on the Brockton campus Jack Sylvia across the blue line the whistle a stoppage they're going to rule off sides against Brockton with 11 minutes to go in the third period. We went to CM for a football game this oh, year. And they, and you talk about a great facility. Yeah. They've got a, their own practice bubble. Mm -hmm. And that that's kind of was the motivation to renovate our current weight room space is You go in, the kids are excited, they're motivated to work out. It's not a dark, dingy, depressing place that the weight room had become. So we're doing red and black turf in there and state-of-the-art um, rubberized flooring. 
And it's going to be more of a CrossFit setup, not your old powerlifting days in which you would sit under the squat rack and see how much you could squat for one time or bench press for one time. It, it's all about doing body weight and sports-specific exercises for, for all the kids. Frank Atten keeping it in. Now Peyton Sylvia launching one from the blue line goes wide to the right. Rather that was Zach Sylvia. There's a lot of changes for the Brockton High Athletic Program. Of course, two new soccer coaches. It was very successful first years here at Brockton High, mm -hmm. both Arminio Furtado and Denise Glennon. Yeah, both teams made the tournament and did a nice job. Football team making a nice little run. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about what we have coming up in the future here. I mean, the, our freshman teams in all of the sports, I, I think that they're our strongest. And I, I don't mean to take anything away from the varsity teams that had done really well, but when I take a look at the boys' soccer and girls' soccer, the freshmen, I mean, we have a really good good core group of athletes that we're looking forward to contributing over the next three years up here. We'll have, I, I guarantee you, we'll have quite a few sophomores playing varsity level in in the fall, winter, and the spring. Well, you mentioned the, the sophomores. The girls' soccer team I think had eight sophomores mm -hmm. and they'll have varsity squad And they'll have year. Gabby coming back and Jayla Smith coming back and um, Alicia Talkman will be a sophomore next year, and she started on the JV level as a freshman. So that there is a really good core group of kids. Eight sophomores on this Brockton High hockey team. And you mentioned the, the 13 eighth graders that are mm -hmm. getting ready to come up to the high school. All Birmingham all the way down the ice. It will go for an icing against the boxers. 8 11 to go in the third period. Brockton up 3 to nothing over the Durfee Hilltoppers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Joined alongside Kevin Cairo, high above the ice here at Easy Aff Arena. One would think it was almost spring today until you walk in here. <laughs> Marissa Massaro, one of the five seniors that are being celebrated here on Senior Day. What do you think? It's probably about 26, 28 degrees in here. You have a thermometer on that I, I watch you guys? I'm going to try to find one. <laughs> I'm going to put my guesses on 17. Uh, 17? I'm going to say 28. 17 if you figure in the wind chill. <laughs> it's almost like there's a giant sheet of ice somewhere in here. <laughs> Keys to the game. Always sharpen your skates. Always. It's a sheet of ice out there. Right out of the Derek Sanderson playbook. Score more goals than the other team. Constant four checking. That's got to be interference. Peyton Sylvia was elbowed down to the ice. He's slow to get up. And Whistles in. The refs completely missed it. Peyton Sylvia skating very gingerly over to the bench. He was elbowed in the face, and not one of the officials put their arms in the air. Seven oh six to go. Brockton should be on a on a four minute power play, but they're not. Zach Sylvia off the boards for Peter Sylvia. This is what we talked about earlier, is that you just have to keep a handle on the game because it had been a little chippy up until this point. You would just hate to see something with, you know, with three quarters of the way through the game to somebody get injured because the ref didn't take control. And I'm hoping that's not the case, but you never want to see that happen. Palermo up front blocked away by Botello on the rebound attempt. Sylvia put it wide. This one cleared off the boards and should go down for an icing against the Hilltoppers with 6.21 to go. Let me see if I have a temperature gauge here on my phone. Yeah. 
We're going to take the stoppage to thank our cameraman for today's festivities. The one, the only, Mike the Postman Simmons with another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. This one extra frosty. <laughs> you think? Shot blocked away is number 16 for the Hilltoppers. Goes sliding into the boards. Now right on front, Stag known with an excellent pad save. And for as smart as my smartphone is. No thermometer. No thermometer. Sylvia denying the breakaway for Cam Bronco. Five twenty-six to go in the third period. Now Brockton up again, three to nothing over their big three divisional rivals, the Durfee Hilltoppers. Shot saved by Cam Botello. He's had a very good game in net for the Hilltoppers. So we talked about the successes of Brockton High Athletics. What you're working on. New jerseys for just about every team. Yeah, that we're hoping between um, this year and next that we'll have all our varsity teams in, in new Nike gear and uh, with some warm-up tops and, and things of that nature. It's very important for the kids, whatever they take, the ice, the field, the, the court. Oh, there's Still a goal. Be a launching one from the blue oh, line, and that finds good. the back of the net. I just think it's real important that, you, you know, you look good, you, you feel good, you play a little bit better. And there's just something about a Nike that just kids like. They relate to it. It's a sign of excellence. And that's something that we're hoping to strive to get here at the high school. Of course, the Nike uniforms debuting with both the boys and girls basketball teams. Mm -hmm. And the swim teams this, and this swim winter. Teams. Yep. And our track team. We, uh, anybody who qualified for the States, we went out and purchased um, new shirts and shorts for them to represent. And I got a secret. They worked. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's special, that if you earn your way to the States, for, to qualify and, and we'll collect those at the end of the year and hopefully that'll be a tradition where if you earn your way in to represent the school we'll give you something special to put on your back Frank Atten making a nifty move unable to get a clean shot off now Durfee in a foot race and Justin Crookshank able to put this one off the boards a shot for number oh, seven, nice, blocked away. Nice block, Anthony. By diving, Anthony Paul. Oh, Zach Sylvia, rather. Oh, sorry. 342 Can't tell to the go. six from the nine. My bad. <laughs> Yet another penalty. This one going to go. Well, I'm pretty sure that's the sign for boarding. Number seven. I have a hold. Cam Bronco, you got a hold. <laughs> we'll find out. I want to go holding. Owen Norton headed to the box, the junior defenseman, a minute and 30 seconds in the sin bin. Four forwards plus an offensive minded defenseman for the Brockton Boxers. Bridges, Atten, Paul, Massaro, and Zach Sylvia on the power play unit. Holding it is. So I think I'm two for two. Except you called Zach Sylvia Anthony Paul deflected <laughs> just wide. <laughs> but who's keeping score at home? Six, nine. I mean, he was laying down. Fair enough. <laughs> Maybe those new Nike uniforms next year will have the numbers on the front. <laughs> that would be helpful. 111 on the power play, 315 left to go in the third period. Brockton up four to nothing, looking to add to that total. Zach Sylvia with two goals already on the day with the puck now. He launches one oh. and it deflects off the knob of the stick of Botello. Number 21 has it, Seamus Sheehan. 
Say that name five times fast. Former South Dragon. His nickname was She Dog. She Dog. This one deflected in by Marissa Massaro from Zach Sylvia. And Brocken goes up by five with 2.52 to go in the third. I have to say, the Durfee team for only having nine skaters, you know, they, they put up a pretty good fight. I think this is where you're trying to see a little fatigue settling. Timeout called by Durfee. I know. I think this is, not that we want to see this from the broadcast booth, but Brockton can kind of sit back, put the, their fourth line in for a little bit yeah. more time. Just give them some experience. Give them, I mean, we get a I very agree. big week ahead. Nadick, mm -hmm. Walpole, and finishing the season to North Quincy on Friday. Let me check. I think it could be. Let me see what we got here. Mansfield. Mansfield, the Hornets. Two o'clock, all games here at two. Right during vacation week. Yeah, happy vacation. We're, we're here. Happy vacation. Four out of five days. Yeah. Here Why on not? Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But where else would you rather be, Matt? On a beach <laughs> in Florida or Hawaii. <laughs> like to be on the team plane for the Bruins and. Southern California wouldn't be too shabby. That wouldn't be too shabby at all. I was just out there back in July, and the hotel was literally down the street from the pond. And I can't get over how big the Honda Center is. I mean, it is massive. And it was pretty cool. You had the, the pond there, and right across the street you've got... Um, why are you laughing? Am I, am I, do I have my information I, right? I turned around and I said, it's huge. It's huge. huge. It is. No, it's huge. just. It's <laughs> <laughs> but it's really cool because you had the Anaheim Angels Park diagonally across from where the Ducks play. So it's just a wonderful place. If, if you're a sports fan in Southern California, everything's right there for you. The same thing in Philadelphia. I don't know if you've been down there, but... Um, where the Phillies play and the Eagles and the Flyers, it's all... All downtown. And they're a, trying to do the same thing in Detroit. Yeah, and it's just a really cool setup. They have a lot of restaurants and um, parking's easy. As much as I like that setup, I love the garden being where the garden is. I do. I'm Fenway not Park's not going anywhere anytime soon. Nope. Something special about oh. Foxborough in the middle of nowhere on Route 1, and then it just opens up, and there's a giant outdoor mall and football stadium. No, they, we, we definitely do it up right here. Um, nothing better than going to the North End before a game. Oh, yeah. I was at Regina's. Many a time. I was at Regina's last Saturday when the Bruins beat Vancouver. Pre-game meal with the misses. And can't leave without going to Modern Pastry for a cannoli and a, a lobster tail. And that's the million dollar question. Are you a Modern Pastry guy or a Mike's Pastry Mike's. guy? You're Mike's. I'm a Mike's. See? Me and my Modern, because Modern's made in-house. Mike's is made um, in a corner. Goyette launching one and he snipes Sweet it Lou. top corner. Sweet Lou on senior day. What a nice way to end the senior night for him. But did you know that Mike's Pastry was not made there in the North End? It I did not. It's shipped in. They have a commissary off-site, and it's shipped in. Where Modern Pastry is made in-house every day. Both good, though. Don't get me wrong. Well, for those keeping score at home, three of five seniors have scored for the boxers today. All we need is Adam, uh, the goalie, to score. <laughs> Andrew Petty and uh, Adam Stagnone. <laughs> two outliers in that conversation. I'd love to see Stag get a goal. He may. They, they, they could pull the goal. <laughs> I don't know what the point would be. 
don't know if you just saw, but the referee was a little upset with the Durfee bench that they had somebody hanging their stick over yep. the bench, and the ref went right into it. One minute to go in this one. Six to nothing. Boxers on top of Durfee. Six nothing. Boxers. And this is what it was earlier in the year, wasn't it? Same score. Six nothing. At Durfee, down in Fall River. The six goals, two from Zach Sylvia, one from Peyton Sylvia, one for Goyette, one for Massaro. There's another one in there somewhere. Crookshank, I think, from the from the top of the blue line. Yeah, I think you're right. Crookshank holding this one, five seconds to go. He sends it up to number two. Nick Landry, the freshman, in for his first shift of the game. Last second that's, save by Stagnone, and that's a nice win. Victorious Brockton boxers who played a much cleaner and technically yeah, that third sound period, that, third period. Yeah, that third, that third period is what I expected. I think they came out a little flat for the first couple periods, and they finished strong with three in the third, and they got to feel good. And I think that's a nice two-game win streak. Well, it doesn't look like the box has expended too much energy. They've got Nadek on Monday. Yeah, nice day off tomorrow, kind of regroup and refresh those legs. And uh, that's, that's a good way for senior night to end with a 6 nothing home win. What's the strategy going into Monday against the Red Hawks? And do they try to replicate the Norwood game, or do they try to add to that? If I were Chris, I would try to replicate their game against Norwood. That was a good game plan in which they were physical, um, they created their own breaks, and they just played hard for three periods. And I just think that that's a good philosophy. And if don't change it based on who your opponent is, that if that style works for you, that's what I would keep with. Well, six nothing. The final score from AZ Afarina, the Brockton Boxers, getting the big victory over big three divisional rivals, the Durfee Hilltoppers. For everybody here at Brockton Community Access, our cameraman Mike the Postman Simmons, my broadcast partner Mr. Kevin Cairo, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.